Hi, I'm Mandy Pryor and welcome to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Spotlight on Pittsburgh is a program about Pittsburgh's most fascinating people and what they do to make Pittsburgh an amazing place to live and work. When we come back, I'll introduce you to our first guest, that guy with the birds. As you can see, I have Buttercup with me already. And later we'll have a uh, gentleman from the Pittsburgh Pet Expo, Rocco Lamana, who will be talking about what's coming up this November. We'll see you after the break. <music> It's your home, it's your dream. Great on testing, keep it healthy and clean. Make it green, green, green. Making it green starts from the ground up, so make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Test your home for the presence of radon. Go to epa.gov slash radon. Make it green. Parents sure have their hands full, and they could use an extra hand. Now, every state offers free or low-cost health insurance for your sports hero or budding artist. Kids up to age 19 can get checkups, doctor and dentist visits, hospital care, prescriptions, and more. Your child may qualify based on your family size and income. It's one less thing to worry about. Call or go online to enroll now. Why wait? Hi, Kenny, and thank you so much for coming on the show and bringing your feathered friends. Absolutely. So how does it look? Do you, you like look my new hat? Perfect. It's good? Absolutely. So what can you tell me, how did this, that guy with the birds, how did it all get started? Well, it was actually started by a very dear friend of mine. His name was John Legey, and um, I worked with John the last 10 or 12 years. Um, John started a rescue for parrots in 1980, just trying to uh, take in unwanted, abused, and neglected parrots. Um, <clears throat> we unfortunately lost John to cancer. It'll be two years this March. Okay. And before his passing, he asked if I would not only take over the educational programs, uh, but his flock as well. Johnny cared for over 100 birds uh, at one point. So the transition from his home to my home has been quite the undertaking, to say the <laughs> least. Did you have birds before that? I did. My wife and I had 22 birds to start with, uh, all rescues. Um, I was just like everybody else. As a kid, I had cockatiels, was always fascinated with birds. And then, uh, like I said, around 15 years ago, I, I purchased an umbrella cockatoo very similar to Django here on my lap. And uh, I brought him home. I named him Captain Morgan. <laughs> I thought he was the coolest thing ever. And uh, I had done some homework, but not enough. And I was fortunate enough to meet John. Uh, we happened to shop at the same store for our bird food. And uh, we hit it off instantly, became friends. So I started traveling with him. Uh, we've yeah. traveled all around the country doing shows and just trying to get the word out. It's not that we condone people owning parrots, but we want you to do your homework before you get one. This is a lifelong commitment. Well, they live a long time, They right? do. They do. A big macaw like Alvy over here can live to be over 100 years old with the right care and wow. diet. So that's a big uh, That is a big that's commitment. That's a big take on. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. What about a little guy like this? A uh, little buttercup up there. She's actually around 15. Uh, but again, with the right care and diet, they can live up into their 30s. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 And so... Um, what can you tell me about these three? Well, Alvy, <coughs> excuse me, is called a green wing macaw. Um, parrot is a family of birds. And then you have the breakdown. You have macaws. Uh, you have cockatoos. There are many different types of species of cockatoos. But in the macaws, there are 17 true living species of uh, macaws. But the problem is, is breeders have taken uh, two of the original of the 17 and now have interbred them. Oh. So if you take a blue and gold macaw and you take a uh, military macaw, you would then get what's called a millergold. Now from the second generation, you can actually have third, even fourth generation of, it's almost like dogs where yeah. they take, you have a cockapoo. They're not, no longer a pedigree. Exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, I'm fortunate enough to have 
uh, at, at home, I have the largest of all of the macaws, which is a hyacinth macaw. Her name is Becca. And then I also have the smallest, which is a Hans macaw, and her name is Hannah. So at the shows, uh, you're able to see the largest and the smallest sitting on the same stand how many, together. How many birds do you typically bring to a show? I uh, usually write around 20, anywhere between 20 and 30. But it honestly depends on what the birds say whenever I go into the aviaries in the morning. Yeah. Uh, whoever wants to go, uh, then the, we bring them along. <laughs> and so what can people expect whenever they come see a show? Well, we basically have a fun, entertaining way of learning about birds, not just parrots, but birds from all around the world. We talk about eagles and condors and ostriches and, you know, just some of the kind of interesting facts about birds that people may not even realize. And so... Um you're going to be coming into the Pittsburgh Pet Expo that's coming up. Yes. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Excellent. Um, so they can see your, your entire group at the show. Yes. And um, what is the difference in caring for a macaw versus a cockatoo versus a lovebird? Well, the cockatoos in particular, um, they are very demanding as far as your time. We call them sponges because they just they will suck up as much attention as possible. But the bad part is, <clears throat> if, uh, if they don't receive that attention, they can really develop some bad habits. Oh. They scream very loud. Um, they'll pull out all of their feathers just in frustration. Molting, right? Well, molting is actually a naturally occurring okay. uh, thing that birds go through when they lose their feathers and get new ones in. But a parrot, because they're very intelligent, their mind is always being stimulated. And when they don't get that stimulation, they will become frustrated mm -hmm. and actually pull out their feathers just in frustration. Huh. It's very, very unique. Well, at least you know whenever you see that, you're like, oh, we right. really need to Take pay care attention of that. to sure, this. Yeah. Sure. sure. And what about the lovebird? Lovebirds, they're actually pretty easy to care for. Uh, she's, she can be uh, <laughs> a little trying sometimes, but... She's trained to sit on top of people's heads. Uh, the funny thing is, is we do a lot of outdoor festivals and fairs, things like that. Kids will stand in line for hours just to hold a few birds. When it's their turn, though, they get up there and they're terrified. And they're so scared. Even by the smallest <laughs> ones. So what we've done is we've trained Buttercup to sit up on top of mom or dad's head. And, and then, then once the kids see that, they start to smile. They think it's really neat. And then we all go ahead and then put Buttercup up there too. That's cute. Yeah. That's cute. And so, um, do you have a particular bird that you like the best? Well, I mean, it, I shouldn't say that in front of the other birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, when people ask me that, I actually will often refer and ask if they have children. And you say, well, which one is your favorite? And obviously, you don't have a favorite. You, you love, love them, them all. all equally. These are my kids. Yeah. And, um, I love all of them uh, very much dearly, and, and uh, I can't say that I have one in particular that uh, was my favorite. Um, I did years ago, um, when a bird picks you to be your mate, it's a pretty incredible feeling. And uh, years ago, <clears throat> the first bird that really chose me was a blue and gold macaw. His name was Gunner, and uh, I unfortunately lost Gunner to a tumor, uh, oh. and yeah, but uh, he was probably my all-time favorite, and I miss him dearly, but he was a really sweet bird. He didn't like my wife so much, but. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. happens Oh, sometimes. yeah, yeah. They pick a person. They do, they yeah. do, yeah. And so do these, do these guys do any tricks, any? Django likes to dance. Django likes to dance. He loves to dance. Can we watch Django oh, dance? Oh, certainly. He? Yep. It's a he? Are you going to do some dance, huh? What do you think? Hi, ah, you ready? <sighs> no, we don't have any music going uh -oh. on. Uh-oh. <laughs> but yeah, during the show, I, I put he on put the chicken dance she song. Likes, so she really and, likes dancing? Uh, yeah, he loves, he. To dance, yeah, he loves to dance to the chicken dance song. But uh, yeah, and the kids really get a kick out of it. He dances across the table and... So is there anything surprising that if somebody takes the bird home as a pet that they should know? Well, uh, a lot of times the breeders, one, they won't tell you how long this bird is going to live. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people, too, 
don't realize their diet is very, very important. They need what they would have if they were in the wild. Uh, fresh fruits, vegetables, a good nut seed mix. Um, but the biggest thing and the biggest complaint that I think I hear uh, when people, because I get phone calls all the time, hey, we have this bird, we just can't care for it anymore, or they have developed an allergy to it. These guys are very, very dusty, particularly the cockatoos, but I'll rub just underneath of there and you can see the white little. on mm -hmm. my hand. Well, that white powder, it keeps them dry when they're in the wild. But when you have that bird in your house, believe me, that powder gets everywhere. So uh, that's probably one of the main things that we try to stress to people that are thinking about getting birds. Good, well, they are absolutely adorable and we're, I'm gonna look forward to seeing them at the Pet Expo. Um, we'll have you back on a little bit with Rocco sure. and um, see, find out more about your bird knowledge. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny, so much. Thank you. You can learn more about Kenny's collection of birds at that guy at thatguywiththebirds.com. Soon we will be bringing on Rocco Lamana, who will be talking about the Pittsburgh Pet Expo. Thanks, and see you after the break. Sometimes it's hard to see where you're going, but you have the power to change your problems. All it takes is courage. Your life, your voice. Org. Hi, Rocco, and welcome. Hey, thanks, Mandy. Thanks for having me. No problem. So we still have Alvi's up here. He's going to hang out with us for this. Um, but we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Pet Expo. Sure. So what can you what can you tell me about it? Sure. What would you like to know? Um, when is it? Uh, this year it's November uh, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, down at the uh, David L. Lawrence Convention Center downtown. So it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, about four weeks. And how long have you been running the show? Uh, this will be the 14th year. Wow. Yeah. Back in 2004, we got it all started, and it's come a long way. Yeah, so what can what kind of entertainment can people expect to see? Uh, we, have, we have a lot this year. We actually have a couple new things that we're excited about. The, uh, the two new things are we have a fully sanctioned cat show at wow. the event. You know, the, the last few years, you know, a lot of people bring their dogs because you can bring your pet on a leash, which usually translates to a dog. Every once in a while, you'll have somebody walking around with a bird on their neck or, you know, a snake in I their hands. I tried to walk my cat once. Yeah. It didn't work out. Yeah, it doesn't work. There. And yeah. you never know, you know, people bring their pets, but you never know what they have at home. They could have a fish tank, they could have reptiles, whatever, but they bring their dogs. So, you know, every year we get a lot of uh, requests, you know, why don't we have more stuff for cats? Yeah. So this year we do. Good. And, and we're excited. Yeah, so it's a fully sanctioned Tika cat show where just like you see on TV. Wow. Yeah, different categories and uh, lots of awards and pomp and what circumstance. Day is that take place? Uh, the whole the, the whole, whole show. Time. Yeah, different categories, different events throughout the entire festival or throughout the entire event. And so it is like a festival. It it's a, is like, like a, a pet festival. festival. Sure, because there's vendors too, correct? Yeah, yeah. We'll have close to three hundred um pet vendors selling stuff giving stuff away um launching educating you on new pet products up and coming pet products you know what to feed your pets what to help your pets go to the bathroom bat any, <laughs> anything you can imagine is at this event and um did i see somewhere that you'll have stingrays yeah we're, that's another new thing that stingrays and the cat shows those are the two new things for this year. So we, will you actually be able to interact or? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's actually a touch tra touch tank. It's the only um, traveling touch tank in the country. They go to a lot of county fairs and other events like that, but it's just like, you know, if you've ever been on vacation and gone to a big time zoo where they have a touch tank with stingrays and skates, um, you can actually reach in there and touch them and learn about them. So yeah, they'll be on site and we're excited about it. And what about for the dogs? Obviously, you said there's a lot of dogs there. So. Yeah, yeah. There's no shortage of, of stuff for dogs and dog owners. We have the uh, the dog the dog jumping dogs. Where they're the ones that jump in the dog jump in the pool for distance <laughs> and water. And um, we have docks and races. We have agility competitions. We have a luring area this year um, that actually double in size of what we had last year. So yeah, no shortage of dog stuff at all. And um, 
anything else that people can get involved in? Yeah, uh, the, as a matter of fact, the, uh, we're also going to have, um, as part of the, the vendors, we have about 30 to 40 rescue organizations that come down and they don't do on-site adoptions, but you can get the ball rolling. You can sort of do a meet and greet with a pet you like, uh, get the paperwork going. Each you know different rescue organization has their own process, if you will, yeah. but you can get started on finding your new uh, family pet at the Pet Expo. Great, and um, so it's around Halloween time. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be having a contest, I hear. Yeah, that's always very popular, the pet costume contest. Uh, a couple years ago, we started doing it. We, we really underestimated how, uh, how popular it is. So, um, you know, the, the last couple of years, we've been making it bigger and bigger and breaking it down by category because the one year it was actually on Halloween weekend, um, I'll say we were unprepared for how many people come and want to dress up their pets at this thing. So now, you know, we have, we have a good system in place and it's a lot, it works a lot better now. Well, that's good. I yeah. mean, I think that's pretty, pretty adorable. A lot of pets walking around in different costumes and uh, people lose their minds. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And so you have, you have celebrities coming? Any yeah, celebrities? yeah, we have, we have Sally Wigan coming uh, to the event this year. I hear she's a big supporter of, of dogs and She pets. comes every year, so yeah, and she, she's really nice. She'll talk to anybody, and uh, she brings her, her two dogs with her, and she's there uh, on Saturday this year. Saturday. Yes, yeah, Saturday at 2 p.m. Sally. Sally on Saturday, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so what else can they do at the event? Um, you know, obviously they have vendors and we have all kinds of um, activities going on. Is there yeah. anything that we haven't mentioned? Yeah, no, I mean, th there is a lot to do there. It's, it's, always, uh, it's always shocking to me, because um, I'm there the whole weekend from the time it's set up until the last vendor leaves Sunday night when it's all over. And, uh, you know, the one year I was, I was sitting by the door for whatever reason, and, uh, you know, sometimes you notice people come in with, you notice something about them. They're having, you know, they have pink shoes or this or that. And, you know, three, two, three hours later, I'd be sitting in another part of the, uh, the event. And uh, you'd see that person again. And you'd say, wow, you know, it's, it's a great thing. There's, there's enough for people to do to be here for three hours. Yeah. So there, there really is. You know, you can shop. You can take a break, watch uh, some of the competitions, the entertainment shop more do, yeah so a great family friendly it, yeah day out. it's yeah it's it's great it, it makes me happy <laughs> what is the um what is the most exotic pet you've seen there oh, you're throwing me a curveball <laughs> um you know we encourage people not to bring anything deadly or poisonous yeah that's so, probably good yeah I so think that's so that's a good thing we've had people you know with tortoises snakes <sighs> You know, nothing, you know, insanely dangerous. I was yeah. Gonna, I was going to ask about a pot belly pig. I just feared. Yeah, like, we, we have had those. Um, you know, we've had people come with, um, like, miniature ponies walking around, you know, stuff, you know, you wouldn't think of. So I guess that kind of fits into that category there. That's great. And so what is the craziest thing that you've seen happen there? Uh you know it comes to mind yeah no just we we hope nothing crazy happens quite frankly yeah <laughs> we hope it, it's a, it's a nice safe event nobody gets bit no there's no accidents you know which are inevitable but yeah no we, we try to keep crazy yeah and there's <laughs> to a minimum but yeah. it's, it's a good family friendly event you bring your kids your family spend a couple hours down there you have fun you go home with some goodies and you know, you say that. And was one a good of time. your um, sponsors, Healthy Pet Products, mm -hmm. is giving away something, or yeah, well, they, they do a ticket promotion. Um, if you go to Healthy Pet Products, you buy ten dollars worth of dog food or anything really at Healthy Pet Products, you get two free tickets. So that's a, that's a good wow, deal. Wow, that's a great yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, and they'll be there on site. They bring in a lot of their uh, manufacturers, and the manufacturers they bring are really the high end, super high quality pet foods, and they give away a ton of samples. So don't you know. Don't hold back asking for samples. At and this there's thing. all kinds of stuff being given out. There's also doggy, what are they called? The doggy poop bags, right? Yeah, well, so, we keep them at the entrance and we encourage well, people. Well, you need them. <laughs> yeah, to take one and clean up. But, you know, we have people from the convention center walking around with mops and brooms and they take care of whatever people don't. So, so is there anything else that you know, that we missed, touch on, that you want people to know about? No, that's it. I mean, please come. It's a cool event. You know, if you've ever been to, you know, a home show or a festival, it's, it's the same thing, except most of the stuff's pet related. 
So, and you can bring your pet, which, you know, I know there's more and more places out there that are starting to be pet friendly, but this is certainly one of them. And the dog babies and the, you know, cats and stuff. Yeah, like I said, people lose their minds for yeah. their pets. Good. Well, and what dates is that again? November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday's 5 to 9, Saturday's 10 to 8, and Sunday's 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Yep. All right. Well, thanks so much, Rocco, sure. for coming on. And we'll be bringing Rocco back out here in a little bit to um, do a bird challenge, a birds of a feather challenge with Kenny. We'll see which one knows the best. Uh, so many furry friends to see at the Pittsburgh Pet Expo. To find out more, please go to pittsburghpetexpo.com. That's pghpetexpo.com. And don't forget to follow it on Facebook. We will be back after the break with Kenny and Rocco for a trivia challenge. We will see you soon. During reintegration, you go through the honeymoon stage, you come home and everything is great at first. When I came back, my wife and children were great and all of a sudden, my wife goes to work, kids go to school, I'm by myself and all I'm doing is thinking about my 43 soldiers. The room could be filled with people that I loved and cared about and I'd be over here thinking about what happened in Iraq three months ago. You're almost like a stranger when you come back. Everything's different. You're kind of discombobulated. People were asking me how it was, but I got the sense they couldn't relate to what I had been through, so I just stopped talking about it. It made a tremendous difference in my life when I chose to get help. In hindsight, it probably saved my life, it saved my marriage. I personally believe that I'm also a better soldier. Sometimes when you come home, it can seem negative, distressing, and concerning. It can all be got through and will be got through. You're not going to be the same person afterwards that you were before you deployed. And don't try to be. Accept who you are. And now figure out how to move forward and make that positive. And welcome back. We are so excited to have both of you here now. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experience at the Pet Expo. Well, <clears throat> I've helped. Johnny do the expo uh, in years past. Uh, last year was my first time doing the pet expo as that guy with the birds. Um, always a great expo though. I mean the kids and the families just have an absolute blast there. They, um, I always get a lot of comments, uh, not only for our stands and setup, uh, but as well as the other vendors in the area. People always just say they had such a wonderful time. Great, and you, I'm, I'm sure, love having Kenny and all the birds yeah, there. Yeah, last year was the uh, first year Kenny did it, you know, by himself and with his team without John. And I mean, I, I was blown away. I mean, constant people at his area asking him questions, and he's so, you know, his bedside manner with the birds and the people. I mean, it's it's second to none. So it's a huge addition to the Pet Expo, and we look forward to having him every year. Good. Well, Rocco, how do you feel about your your bird trivia, generally speaking? Somehow I think it's a little unfair. I know. I know. I knew you were going to say that. But, the you know, it's unique. Caught. How do you feel about your your general bird knowledge? Because these aren't necessarily the, the macaw or the cockatoo or anything. Sure, right. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm going to see what you guys know. Okay. So I had to use my phone today. I usually have note cards, but um, we'll have you, whoever wants to go first. Um, what was the, the most amount of egg yolks found in one bird egg? What would you guess that is? Because you know you've gotten the ones with two in there, right, before. Right, right. So how many do you think were in there? I would say, on a guess, um, four to five. Okay. And what about Nothing you, Rocco? Else. Eighteen. Eighteen. Well, it kind of fits right in the middle. So there was nine, actually, nine, in okay. one egg. So I guess that's a world record. Oh, wow. For that. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether, I think it was a chicken. Oh, um, I would hope so. So the second question is, how long do you think that it takes to hard boil an ostrich egg. Now keep in mind, they're like big, that big, right. yeah. Yeah, 45 um, minutes. 45 minutes, what about you? I'm gonna say maybe 20 minutes to half an hour. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah, it's basically like you're cooking a roast. It uh, takes that long to... <laughs> <laughs> so I won that one. You did, yeah. good job, Rocco. Right. Uh, what type of bird has the smallest egg? A lot of egg questions in here right now. See that? Yeah. I'd have to say a hummingbird. That's what I was going to say. That's absolutely correct. Hey, so you guys are both one for one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, what are the three birds, and you can help each other, what are the three birds that can't fly? An ostrich. It's 
one. That's of one. Yeah. An emu. They can fly, I guess. I, mean, yeah. I was surprised by that. You know. They're pretty big. Yeah. Um, anything else? Chickens, right? Chickens can fly. Can they? Yeah. Short distance. Yeah. yeah. Just away from people running after them, right. usually. <laughs> 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 so the other two were the penguin. Right. Oh. Which, you know, we, we just forget about. And the dodo bird. The dodo mm. bird. Are they still around? I thought they were extinct. Yeah, they might I be extinct. They, were too. I don't know. they still count. Yeah. Um, all right, this one's all about speed. So, so how fast can a falcon swoop? A falcon. A falcon, they're very fast. Very um, fast. I want to say, if I'm right around Alvin knows the 180 answer. miles per hour, 70 miles per hour. 200, so yeah, I knew it was, it was he's one up there. on you. <laughs> and finally, how tall is Big Bird? Hmm. Seven feet. I'd say seven feet. I'd say, yeah, around seven, maybe. Seven one. Seven <laughs> one, right. Yeah. Do the, do the um, <laughs> price is right. Yeah, yeah, right. Eight feet, two inches. Uh, he got so it. he's eight a big, feet. that's wow. definitely a big bird. That's a big bird. All right, well, that's the end of my challenge. You guys did really well. I think it's pretty much a draw on that. Congratulations. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to share about the Pet Expo coming up? Any final words? Please come. Yeah, yeah. please come. Absolutely. Don't miss it this year. <laughs> it's a yeah. really, really good it time. This will be my first year going, so yeah. I'm, I'm Great. super excited. I yeah. love animals. Here's a so. cool little thing about this year's Pet Expo. It actually falls during um, Turn Back the Clock weekend. Okay. So Sunday morning when you get up an extra hour early and you don't know what to do with yourself, <laughs> come to the Pet Expo. It's, that's I mean, good. you know, yeah, that's... There's nothing better, especially when those the kids are up early, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you so much, Kenny and Rocco, for coming on the show, and we'll look forward to seeing you both on the, at the Pet Expo. Pleasure being here. Thanks, Thanks so much. For us. Thank you to both Kenny and Rocco for being on the show, and of course, the birds. Don't forget to follow Spotlight on Pittsburgh on Facebook, Instagram, and as check out our website, spotlightonpittsburgh.com. I will also be giving away a family four pack. Uh, check back tomorrow. I'll give the details on our Facebook page to the Pet Expo. And stay tuned for next time when we shine the spotlight on two more guests.